So thank you very much, everybody. It's a real privilege and a pleasure for me to be here at Ushoga today, the leading hospital for deceased donor liver transplants in the whole of Asia. What I'd like to do today is give you a very brief introduction to the company and the key achievements and how we see ourselves working in the future with uh, Yoshoda. The company was founded, as you may have heard, by two professors of Oxford University, Professor Peter Friend, who's the transplant surgeon, and Professor Constantine Cussius, who's the head of biomedical engineering at the University of Oxford. They founded the business in 2008 and developed this machine because they realized the tragedy of liver transplantation is not those who get the transplant, it's those who don't get a transplant and they die waiting. Meanwhile, many organs are not used. So joining the dots, the idea is to assess every organ and make sure it's transplanted. The way this machine works is it really reproduces nature. So often Mother Nature has all the answers and we just have to look for those. And what we've done here is reproduce nature. We've built a machine which has a brain in the form of a computer, a stomach in, in the form of nutrients being delivered, infused over 24 hours, a heart, a pump, lungs, an oxygenator, and of course, the all important oxygenated red blood cells. And because we've reproduced nature, we can, we can preserve a, a liver for up to 24 hours. We've actually done longer than that, but our regulatory label today is for only 24 hours. Let's understand what is different about this technology compared to the technology that is normally used to preserve a liver, which is sometimes called static cold storage, or SCS for short. That simply preserves, and meanwhile, the liver is degrading over time slowly. And the limit is about 12 hours. So what we've done is create a machine which, as you've heard, can do two more things. Firstly, it can double the time to 24 hours, but also, more critically, it can assess the viability, as you heard from Dr. Chandra and his colleagues. Assessing the viability is also important in the context of liver transplantation. In kidney transplantation, you have the fallback of dialysis. There is no such fallback with a liver. It's so important to make sure the liver works and we can prove it works on this machine. That's what we're doing today. What we are working on in our laboratories back in Oxford um, is abilities to, to treat a liver. So one that we perhaps could not transplant today, we may be able to cure that liver in the future before it's viable to be transplanted. So this is, this is a platform technology, and we will build on this platform. It's a very exciting future we're looking at here. And you showed us will be a great partner hospital for us to push those envelopes, quite literally. Sorry. Just to give you an overview, we've now done about 400 transplants. We're the only company to do a randomized clinical trial. That was published, the front cover of Nature, on the 3rd of May this year, a lot of press. We've now completed a study where we've used discarded organs, we've assessed the organs in the, at the University of Birmingham in the UK, and we've, we've managed to transplant the majority of those because we could prove that they were working fine. We're right now we're just past the halfway point in, a, in an American trial, at 15 centers across the US, so in, uh, we'll be submitting that to the FDA next year. And we're in many countries already. This was the publication, got onto the front cover of Nature, and we got a lot of press on the back of that. So to summarize, we can think of the benefits clinically. It's about a viability assessment, increasing those organs that we can safely transplant, and therefore reducing the waiting list mortality and the injuries following a transplant. Logistically, 24 hours is so important. In some of our sites in Europe, nighttime surgery is a thing of the past. All the transplants are happening in the day. We know 
how popular that is with anaesthetists and surgeons and theatre staff. It's a, it's a semi-planned operation, no longer an emergency operation. So financially, it can be it can be a lower program cost when when it's a semi-planned rather than an emergency. These are some of the testimonials from some of the leading surgeons around the world. Chris Watson is at Cambridge University. He's basically saying it would be unethical not to use this for DCDs. So you probably saw, we've done about those 400 transplants, about 150 of those are DCDs. And we're very keen to make sure we can be a part of the program to get DCDs into India, where you can really expand the program that way. This is a short video from a surgeon in the UK that's used this, and I just wanted to show you that. Sorry, the sound's not very good there, but basically that was one of the subjects